Good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we'll be big box store plant shopping at the Lowe's off of Preston Road in Frisco, Texas. As always, please make sure you are hitting the like button for this video, as well as following me on Instagram at Grow Folds. That's the fastest way to get in touch with me, as well as subscribing to my YouTube channel with the notification bell on if you like daily one hour plant shopping videos. My plant foldies, and for those that are new to the channel, welcome. I call my viewers and subscribers plant foldies. My name is Richie, and we are going to be going to this Lowe's location. I haven't been able to actually upload a big box for plant shopping video in the last couple of days. I really feel bad that I wasn't able to actually premiere daily this past week um, just because I've been super busy with work, but I was able to at least get a really great video of Steve's Leaves um, nursery tour. So if you haven't been able to watch that, definitely check that out. But I happened to get off work at a, a decent time. So I was able to go over here and see what plants they have at this um, Lowe's location. You already know if you want some cost-effective um, plants, you can always go to a big box store to go plant shopping. And Lowe's is one of the big box stores I love to go to just because they do have some really cost-effective um, plants, both indoor or outdoor gardening plants. We also have vegetable plants. You already know that it is um, in the middle of fall. Fall season has started. And so you'll see a lot of these very seasonally sound um, plants. One of the plants that you will often see at a big box store or even a local nursery a grocery store wherever there are plants that are um, going to be sold and that is croton plants so you can see right here we've got a bunch of croton petras the thing about crotons and i mentioned this often in my videos is crotons are actually native to southeast asian um, countries so when i was actually on vacation to the philippines back in august i am a proud filipino american and so um i was really excited to be able to see these croton plants these plants literally grow like weeds they become full-blown trees up to 10 15 feet 20 feet tall trees as well as these cordyline hawaiian tea plants so i love the dark foliage the burgundy color of cordyline hawaiian tea plant and what's really interesting is cordyline plants um there are many different varieties of cordyline plants it is unfortunate that we don't really see a, a, a lot of them but there are quite a bit of um specimens of um cordyline plants now with cordyline plants they do like a lot of light if you're able to grow them outdoors that is really the best place to grow them to be able to grow them indoors successfully you've really got to watch out for spider mites because cordyline plants alongside with other plants um can be more um, susceptible to plant pests now as far as croton plants they're really meant to be grown outdoors now for my grow zone which is north dallas um 8b i would have to grow them um, outdoors in a container and then bring them back inside for the winter but speaking of winter did we just like skip over halloween and thanksgiving and went straight into christmas it's interesting that a lot of big box stores like lowe's and walmart have already put out their christmas trees um target hasn't done it quite yet they're still pretty much into the Halloween season and you know sometimes I really just um, appreciate some retailers really just celebrating the specific season rather than to get ahead of it I mean I don't think I would catch myself buying Christmas ornaments or um, Christmas trees um, in October but you know you know to each his own but as far as this Lowe's location, I'm not 100% sure if it has been restocked, but this is one of my favorite Lowe's locations out in the North Frisco um, area, just because this one tends to stay full, as, as you can see right here. And we're just gonna walk by this area. I am gonna go into full detail about the plants, these indoor tropical plants a little bit later, but we're gonna go walk outside and actually take a look at some of the plants that they have available outdoors. Um, I love the late afternoon um, light, it really illuminates a lot of these plants and you can see right over here it is very peaceful it's very serene I'm really happy that there's not a lot of people shopping so I can freely video these plants and you know what's exciting plant foldies is um, I've really missed just making daily plant shopping videos, but you know, when it comes down to it, sometimes life gets in the way. I really appreciate those that have um, really encouraged me and understand that I may not always be able to do a live premiere at 7 p.m. I mean, I really do attempt to try to get these daily um, uploads. Sometimes I feel like, um, if I don't get one, I feel like I failed our um, plant foldies, but um, 
you know, I have to prioritize work because that is my main source of income. I do appreciate the viewership that you guys get um, been able to give me. And for those that continue to tune into my videos, leave comments, share my um, videos, I really appreciate it. But as you can see right here, whenever you go to like Lowe's, they have many different ways of really displaying their fall decor. And as I pan away over here, this is one of the better Lowe's locations. I always say that not every big box store is created equal. Some big box stores tend to um, to win at growing their plants um, as compared to others. But in the end, um, if you I guess you would be surprised about some of the plant finds you have. Sometimes a big box store that may not have the best plants might have that really uncommon or rare Monstera Thai constellation, for instance. Although I would say Monstera Thai constellation is not really rare anymore. You can really much, you know, you can pretty much find that everywhere. But as you can see, plant foldies, we are just going to walk through here and you can see that the um, merchandising, the displays of Lowe's plants, um, they really do a great job of it. You know, I love um, outdoor gardening. My plan is for next year to really document some outdoor gardening um, plants. Um, I don't think I'll be able to show you my outdoor garden just because it's not really most, you know, really manicured. Although I would say my lantana and for instance, this one right here, this ready fill lantana container, love lantana, especially in my grow zone where they really love the heat. They really love full sun. They really have blown up and have become beautiful um, specimens. I may do a shorts video just to give you a clip of some of my, um, my outdoor lantanas and you can see right over here we've got some beautiful i think this is some type of calabrantroe but these are by proven winners and what's interesting is this year i've noticed that a lot of planters have already become what they call mixed planters where they have the plants all you have to do is literally repot it in the planter of your choice which i think is really easy and um, more beneficial for those that do not have a green thumb or really have the patience to put plants together in a container um, fall is a season where you will see a lot of beautiful oranges, reds, yellows, burgundy, maroon, dark colors. And I mean, for instance, right here, they have these, um, you know, tropical landscapes. And you can see right over here, we've got some beautiful crotons. And I did want to say for those that are out in Florida, um, I really hope you guys have stayed safe with the hurricane. Please stay safe. You know, I think about, you know, um, all of these natural disasters that happen. And I just hope that everybody has remained safe. Um, let's make sure that for all those plant foldies that are from Florida that watch the videos, you already know that you are in our thoughts and prayers. But to go back to these tropical landscapes, I really do wish I had more of a tropical environment to grow these plants. But unfortunately, that is not necessarily the case in North Dallas. I do appreciate living out in North Dallas just because if you've been watching my videos for the last 10, 11 months, I don't even know how long I've been doing plant shopping videos. Um, we have a immense amount of different big box stores to where you can buy plants or these local plant nurseries. And again, plant foldies, you can see right here, Croton Petra, love it. Some people hate Crotons. I absolutely love them. And I think it's because um, they really remind me of my home country and there's a lot of emotional um, attachments I have with certain plants. They remind me of my home country or sometimes it could be a memory from my childhood. And so plant foldies, um, as I always ask whenever you watch my videos, please leave in the comments what plants you like, what plants um, really just you have like a special attachment to. I know that sometimes even like crotons, it's a basic plant, um, you know, when when you really think about some of the other plants, but it's one that I just really um, find intriguing. I love the beautiful colors. Same thing with these desert rows, and I do regret not purchasing these desert rows when they were actually in their prime. I feel like they've kind of declined in their health a little bit um, as they stay at big box stores, and that's really not a knock at the big box store. It's just that I always believe that whenever you find a plant, buy it right away if you're able to find them as soon as a big box or re, um, um, actually, um, what is it? Unpacks them because that is when they're most healthy. They just came back from, you know, came from a nursery that had really ideal growing conditions. And while big box stores um, attempt to, you know, water the plants, they may not be able to provide the same kind of plant care as say a nursery. And can we take a look at these beautiful plants here? I love the dark foliage plants. 
This one is an exception right here, exceptionally beautiful. And these are by Monrovo Plants. This one is for $10.98. That's not a bad price at all for that um, flowering plant. And you know, when I reflect back on being able to go to Steve's Leaves Nursery to be able to actually showcase that nursery in detail, I was just in awe of the different types of plants that they have available that maybe even a big box store doesn't. But to give credit to like Lowe's or any other big box store that does provide plants you can see we do have some succulents and cactus I am slowly getting into succulents and cactus I think for me though if I'm gonna grow a succulent or a cactus I'm gonna definitely have to grow them in a situation where they're in a terracotta planter and the reason why I like to grow um, plants that need to be on more of the dry side terracotta planters tend to dry the soil a little bit faster versus a plastic container um, and you know with a lot of these succulents and cactus like, like I really love this Ipunsi for instance um they do not want to be overwatered, so it's better to be more on the dry side and you would think for me being somebody who what you would call underwaters where i don't really water my plants as more as necessarily what they they require um you would think that i would love succulents and cactus but they're still a very um challenging plant they're not the easiest plants to grow sometimes you can't just not water them otherwise they end up you know um, going to plant heaven but for those that love um succulents and cactus you can see right here this is a um, Crusala um, ogre ears. I love Crusala or what you would call jade plants, beautiful plants, easy to care for plants, plants that are very much um, easy to find at a big box store or a local nursery. You know, as a, as a kid, I grew up with a bunch of jade plants. My grandmother grew a bunch of jade plants. And you know, that's another succulent that I'm more familiar with because I grew up, um, you know, growing those plants. And that's the reason why a lot of these plants, um, the ones that I can talk more confidently about um, it's because I did grow up um, with certain plants so you know jade plant crusala however you want to call it beautiful plant easy to care for a little bit more forgiving than some of the other succulents but as you can see right here I do like calanchoes so when I first thought of you know seeing calanchoes I remember seeing calanchoes at a grocery store they were blooming didn't realize that a calancho is actually a flowering type um, succulent but they have different varieties where they don't necessarily flower that is one of them that I see and um, can you say how gorgeous these um, succulent arrangements are by Oasis Plants? This one is for $28.98. So if you want a beautiful succulent arrangement with, um, you know, plants that are in an arrangement with very similar care tips, I would just suggest getting a um, succulent arrangement like this. They have many different varieties. And again, for succulents, if you're going to ever um, take care of succulents, you want to take care of succulents where you don't necessarily water them from the top, like don't get their um, leaves and foliage wet. If possible, um, water them from the base or the bottom or do bottom watering. I think it's going to be a little bit um, safer to do it that way to where there's not water sitting on the actual um, foliage. That's one of the main ways of killing a succulent is number one, over watering them, but number two, having um, water sit on the actual plant that is a fast way of actually rotting the foliage and i mean look at this this is so beautiful plant foldies and i really did miss like doing live premieres this week i would say i've only been able to upload what three or four videos and even one of the videos was a a compilation i think um, for those that actually tune in to watch my compilations really appreciate it it's one of those situations where um i kind of just recycled that content just because i didn't have time to actually um get that so i appreciate those who actually take the time to watch my um compilations as well you can see this beautiful plant right over here this one is for eight dollars and 98 cents really like that purple foliage right against that neon green color and so um you know as far as the plants and don't worry i will be featuring the indoor tropical plants in just a second um i just wanted to showcase again the outdoor section the lowe's garden center just because they do have some beautiful plants and they always say fall is um the season to go plant plants i think for fall season the best plants to grow are definitely trees um, you know, I am a huge fan of Japanese maple or what you call a 
laser palmatum and that is the best time to plant some of these plants that way they can actually develop their roots go dormant and be ready for the spring and you can see right here golden dew drops beautiful plant as well um you know i was thinking of trying to grow this plant indoors but it feels like it's going to be one of those plants that would be more of a shrub type tree this one is for four dollars and 98 cents um lowe's has some really cost effective pricing and for the most part if you're looking to do like a garden or you know actually have a landscape i would recommend grow, um, buying your plants at lowe's um, they do have many selections it's interesting that as the seasons change they have other plants that are more readily available it is interesting that they also have those potato vines still readily available this one is in a hanging basket and i love neon colored plants you already know plant foldies that um, neon colored plants are my jam as well as dark foliage plants pink plants and this is interesting $49.98 you've got a wind chime basket planter what an interesting concept and speaking of um interesting concepts as i do my plant um room i was thinking of doing a chandelier where there's going to be a bunch of propagation um you know tubes i think that would re be really cool i remember seeing that a ruballs nursery or plant shop out in dallas texas i mean i regret not purchasing that but i have somebody that i can commission to possibly make that light fixture so we'll see what that looks like and you can see right here i featured ajuga both the variegated ajuga and the regular ajuga in many of my videos earlier this spring i'm glad they're back i mean they're a beautiful plant they're a plant that you can actually grow as an indoor plant um, just remember that these plants tend to be a little bit more thirsty so you just have to make sure that you are providing them with um, quite a bit of water um, which brings me to a point that I don't know how I'm able to grow certain plants in my collection one plant that I would say is has been giving me a lot of trouble and that is the irisene um, um, rose plant um, that plant is super thirsty like every other day I see it almost wilting and dying and then I water it and so for me I think I might have to hold back on some of the more um thirsty plants just because i don't have the time to really invest in them and that's the thing plant foldies when it comes down to it you have to really look at your plant care where it becomes less of a chore um, less stressful and that means you're gonna have to just uh, you know assess what type of time um, you have for your plants now as far as like chrysanthemums you know these are fall plants that a lot of people grow as a fall container more so an annual but if you grow a chrysanthemum or a mum on the ground um, they are considered perennials and will come back year after year cyclamen they start they tend to start coming back during the cooler months i remember always seeing these early spring and even in the winter i mean look at how gorgeous the blooms are but for me cyclamen are beautiful in a sense that if you look at their their um, actual leaves they've got some beautiful texture they almost kind of remind me of rex begonia foliage almost i don't know in, in a sense but look at how vibrant that red color is and then you can see the yellow mums over here and that's the reason why i like like to walk around the outdoor section as well you know when it comes down to a plant foldies i love plants whether it's indoor tropical plants outdoor gardening vegetable plants herbs um trees japanese maples you name it i'm all about it and hopefully we are um, continuing to grow this um community i've noticed that we are close to 11,000 subscribers and for those that really do take the time to number one watch my videos in its entirety number two actually hit the like button for my video you know there is a lot of effort that's placed into making these plant shopping videos so i hope you can at least validate and reward my efforts to produce this type of content by hitting the like button that is the fastest and easiest way to really promote this channel to get more people involved in it so please hit the like button if you made it this far and also if you made it this far into the video thank you now coleus plants are back in action so for a little while especially in the summer months coleus tend to be a little bit less um I would just say a little bit less um, available. Yes, available. Like I just think that with coleus being so thirsty of a plant, um, you know, especially the summer months in Texas, you know, 100 plus degree weather, we are getting a little bit more of a cold front. Although I heard that next week we're going to go back into the mid or um, high 90s. And so I'm hoping that we can get a little bit more cooler weather. Now, coleus plants, I have an obsession. I'm still obsessed with coleus plants. I haven't talked nearly as much about them because number one, I haven't seen them out whenever I do big box or plant shopping videos. But then number two, they've just become such an easy plant to grow 
outdoors as in I don't have to water them as much because I have a sprinkler system that keeps them watered and so if you're able to get away with that you definitely should grow coleus plants they're very um, versatile plants and you can see right here one of my favorite plants to grow also is a rodeo oyster plant look at this one right here so this one out of all of the other rodeo oyster plants has the most pink and I really think that a lot of that um, coloration is really because it's received a lot better light than the other ones this one be one that I am almost tempted to purchase although I already have two Rodeo oyster plants um, you know I talk about plants in the, your plant collection and there are certain plants I don't mind have multiples of that would be a plant that I don't have a uh, mind having multiples of you know other plants that I like to have multiples of would be like coleus plants like even this one right here look at how vibrant that red is I don't mind um, having epiprimnum arium or pothos plants multiples of those multiples of aglionema um, because those plants are very easy to care for and then also I don't mind having multiples of Monster Thai constellations. So plant foldies, you already know, I've discovered a lot of Monster Thai constellations as I've done these big box or plant shopping videos. And even though I already have multiples of them, it's one of those plants that if it's a pretty good price, I'm gonna go ahead and purchase it. And that's the thing about all of these plants. You never know what you're gonna run into in terms of you know the plants. Sometimes you'll run into like a really nice Lowe's like this, for instance, that has all of these beautiful plants. Like look at this viola right here, kind of looks like um, a pansy, a miniature pansy, but it's called a viola. Um, you would just be surprised at what kind of plants you end up running into. For me, I always keep an open mind whenever I go big box store plant shopping. Sometimes the worst big box stores I've seen where literally all of their plants are dying, they have no selection, and then all of a sudden I find like, I don't know, some rare or uncommon plant, some really nice robust like hanging basket by Costa Farm. So um, you just never know. And that's the reason why I like to go to these big box stores. And even though I have featured them on multiple occasions on my videos, like for instance, I remember featuring this, this little, um, palette of plants by live trends sometimes you'll find a restock and we're gonna see if this actual Lowe's has a restock and you know plant foldies I am asking if you do um, plant shopping let me know what plants you're finding in your area I know that we have a lot of plant foldies that are outside of the Dallas Fort Worth area and so I'm kind of curious what plants are actually entering your market please do leave that in the comments you already know I love that interactive um, feature of our channel and you know um, I would say definitely look for a post because I do plan on creating a Facebook um, account for the Growfolds YouTube channel for the Plant Foldy community um, that is in the works just because I am an influencer for the Texas Aeroid show and I really want to make sure that I'm also doing my part to be able to promote on Facebook so definitely take a look at that. Um, Sansevieria samurai, love this. This one is in a self-watering planter. Although I would say for Sansevieria or snake plants, they don't really need to be in a self-watering planter because they're very much so low light tolerant um, and uh, not low light tolerant, but also um, very much so drought tolerant is what I meant. Like if you're looking for an easy to care for um, Sansevieria, I would go for the ones that are not the Sansevieria trifasciatas. I would go for the ones that are the more like starfish or the more uh, round ones like this. The ones that have a little bit more meat to their leaves. Um, you can see right here, this is another interesting type of Sansevieria. I don't know what it is, but what I do know is it is a easy to care for plant. One that you can actually put in a very low light condition and it will survive. Will it thrive? Not necessarily. It may not put a lot of growth into it, but you know, sometimes you can't help the, the lighting conditions you have in your indoor spaces. So it's always cool to see, um, you know, some plants that are a little bit more um, low light tolerant. And obviously this is a plant foldy love. This is a Hedra Helix or what you call the Hedera Helix or English Ivy. This one is just an English Ivy. It doesn't really have like a patented name. That one is by Costa Farms for $9.98. I really like the ceramic planter. And then you can see over here, we've got a Croton Mame. Beautiful plant as well for $9.98. I do like the planter. It has a nice um, color about it. You know, it has that um, terracotta look. Um, I love terracotta planters. I think they're super classic. And you know, when you talk about planters, I tend to go for more plants that are a little bit more minimalistic um, just because I feel like if it's got more minimalistic features it really um, becomes less of a distraction and the plant is more highlighted like this nice gray color on this Dracaena white jewel 
beautiful planter. And again, this is only for $9.98 by Costa Farms. So this is actually in the five and a half inch planter. You know, Costa Farms always churns out a lot of these plants and you know, one of my biggest dreams is to be able to actually see Costa Farms um, nursery out in Florida. You know, the fact that I was able to get access to going to Steve's leaves and seeing where all the magic happens, I could only imagine seeing like Costa Farms um, nurseries, how big of a scale that is, what that all looks like and um, how their production is. You know, we look at all of these Costa Farm plants. I mean, this one right here, look at this beautiful navy blue um, ceramic planter. Peace Lily, very easy plant, a plant that I would recommend for those that like to water plants because it is a very thirsty plant it wouldn't do very well in my care because it is a very thirsty plant but you know as far as um just the production of costa farms they just churn out so many plants i am actually really surprised about the level of plants they have a bit you know readily available for the general public like this one right here dracaena limelight love that neon color and with the dracaena this dr particular dracaena can get pretty large and i really love the look of that that particular um, planter you know that that is you know that that planter and then also just the dracaena lime light the color of it is absolutely stunning that neon color and remember with that neon plant that plant can actually tolerate a lower light condition and that goes to another point of mine who has a dracaena plant ever since you've been watching my youtube channel please leave that in the comments i really am trying to plant fluence a lot of people into plants that we may always overlook or may have overlooked in the past um, it is exciting when i say it's exciting plant foliage to see that people have gotten into agalionemas i love that and speaking of pothos plants right here look at this neon queen pothos by live trends really like the planter it's very minimalistic and look at that variegation now with neon queen pothos i would say that is another pothos i am a fan of just because it is one that has more neon color but you can see that the variegation is quite interesting the only thing about neon queen pothos is it the the variegation to upkeep it you've really got to give it quite a bit of light otherwise it starts to revert back to more of a green color now this pearls and jade pothos um even if you give it lower light conditions it will actually maintain a lot of its coloration so that's one you know plus for that although it is a slower growing pothos plant you know the enjoy pothos need the neon poth uh what is it the pearls and jade pothos global green pothos lemon moran pothos those smaller leaf pothos plants tend to be a slower grower now golden pothos classic plant with golden pothos though i would tell you golden pothos come in a range of um variegation they have what they call the hawaiian pothos which is basically a very high variegated um, golden pothos with golden pothos give it a lot of light you'll get better variegation now let's take a look at this beautiful red marantha and so maranthas that is another plant i do want to experiment and possibly put in my plant collection it's another one that is on my wish list i have the silver band marantha and it's doing very well the thing about maranthas is i'm thinking if i'm going to grow maranthas and possibly more calatheas i'm probably going to go ahead and transfer them into what you call semi-hydroponics so i've been growing a lot of my alocasias for instance in leka as well as pawn and it has done wonders for me in terms of the upkeep as well as like plant pests i feel like growing plants in semi-hydroponics it's just easier to control and the plant pests it, for some reason they kind of disappear um but like this one right here look at this live trends um silver band marantha beautiful plant it has a little bit of browning on some of the leaves um with silver band maranthas or prayer plants those plants do need to be watered on on a more consistent basis i feel like if you let their soil dry out completely that's not necessarily a good thing so you want to make sure that you are providing it with quite a bit of water um it's okay to be more of an overwaterer when it comes to like prayer plants maranthas stromanthes and calathea so definitely um keep that in mind and then plant foldies i like to feature certain um products that i use like for instance whenever i make my um aeroid mix i like to use horticultural um perlite although i tend to buy it at heb it's a little bit um less expensive there you know it's more um you know it's still a good price and an orchid bark mix i tend to buy that at um lowe's i tend to buy the better grow um orchid bark mix i mix that with my potting soil and i use the um fox farms um base potting soil mix it with perlite and 
orchid bark, and then I also put some systemic um, granules to make sure that the pests don't really get into the soil, and voila, that is my aeroid mix. Now, I also wanna show you planters. So you can see that Lowe's here has all of their planters in, in what you call a color story. So they've got that, um, they've got the dark colors right over here, they've got the neutral colors, the blues and greens, and you know, for instance, the, um, the planters that have some texture, I'm okay with some texture, but I prefer the glaze to be more of a matte finish. I do like this particular planter here, and it's because it has a ginkgo leaf. Ginkgo is probably one of my favorite plants or my, one of my favorite trees to grow. I am so excited, and I hope I can share my ginkgo tree um, on video, but I've been growing a ginkgo tree in my backyard for a good five years, and it has actually put on quite a bit of height. It started out as like a four foot, tree when I first bought it but I believe now it's about 15 you know 15 feet tall beautiful plant it's one that I definitely want to show um, on video now plant foldies you can see that as far as Lowe's Lowe's um, never runs out of Costa Farms plants I would say out of all the big box stores Costa Farms plants are more readily available at um, Lowe's I don't know if it's just you know the availability that Costa Farm sends to Lowe's, but you can see here, lots of hanging baskets. This one is a six inch hanging basket of um, Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. Um, and then you can see right here, this is some type of cactus right here, Cactus Monstrosa. Um, interesting cactus. I don't really know a lot about it. I would say I think it's more of a tropical cactus. So again, plant foldies, if you have any idea of the care tips for that, please leave that in the comments. And then you can see that there's always going to be an end cap with the wick and grow stuff. Here is a Hedra Helix or what you call the Hedera Helix Bettina Ivy. I've had one of these before. It has gone to plant heaven. Um, that is another Ivy that I would actually want to add into my collection again someday. I have three um, Hedera Helix growing currently. Two are outside thriving. One is actually growing in my plant room, doing okay. And then I have an Algerian Ivy I got at PETA's Planters that's doing very well, um, just cause it's right next to a humidifier. And then over here, we've got a Syngonia Maria. Look at that beautiful chocolate foliage um you know with syngonia maria that's another syngonia while it's a common one that you can find at a big box store um that is another one that i want to add to my collection because it does have that dark dark foliage the thing about syngonia maria just like with dark foliage plants more light will give it better um, coloration and then over here it's another ivy i want to add this is the hedra helix or what you call the Hedera Helix Mini Ivy. And what I like about the Hedera Helix Mini Ivy is the fact that it has smaller leaves, so it's a little bit more compact. The variegation is really nice, and it has more of a trilobe um, leaf shape, but it's a little bit rounder on the edges. That's another thing I love about English Ivy is they have so many different varieties. I kind of wish that, um, Costa Farms would do a feature maybe on their Instagram story or on their website where they just feature every single Hedera Helix that they have available. And you can see they have these self-watering um, containers um, that you can put these plants in because I've noticed that the exotic angel planters or the plants that Costa Farms sources out has that little wick right there, that self-watering wick. Um, it, you know, out of all the big box stores, Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, Lowe's is the only one that has a self-watering wick planters. Um, for some people, I think self-watering plants is just definitely a way to go. Um, for me, it could be a you know definitely a place for me to be able to control my watering. Um, but I've started to just um, grow my plants in semi-hydroponic um, substrates versus just doing self-watering planters. Um, that one is a Daifin Bakia in a 12 inch or a six inch planter for $12.98. Notice how it fits in a beautiful um, container like that. Now with Daifin Bakia, so the Daifin Bakia I have is actually losing a couple of leaves. I don't know if the humi humidity is not high enough or if it's not getting enough light. Um, again, Daifin Bakias, they're gorgeous plants, but they are challenge challenging plants because they do need quite a bit of light. Um, it's one of those plants that, you know, when I was in the Philippines, it just grew rampant and they were just so gorgeous. And then this is another plant that I 
was almost tempted to purchase earlier this year. This is a um, teddy bear vine or some type of trade scanthia. I believe it is a trade scanthia. It's got that velvety texture. The thing about this plant, again, is it is a pretty vigorous grower. It's easy to propagate. You can literally take cuttings, stick it in water, and it will root. The problem with this plant is alongside with a lot of trade scanthia is it tends to get leggy. And so you have to really trim it back for it to stay kind of bushy. Otherwise, you're going to have a leggy plant. Um, but that is for $16.98. All of the six inch hanging baskets by Costa Farms um, is for $16.98. I tend to like the six inch planters for hanging baskets versus the eight inch just because there's less, um, I guess there's less surface space that you can do and it's probably not as heavy to actually hang from the ceiling. And then over here, we've got a Dracaena um, Sandriana or what you call the lucky bamboo. It is actually not a bamboo, but it's actually related to the Dracaena family. This is another plant that does require a little bit more water. They do say that this brings good luck. It's got one of those like feng shui type plants. Same thing with like Pachira aquatica or money tree plant. In a proud we were Birds of a feather, different kind We were alive and through the pain You were never once so vain Cut the cords, they kept us connected Blacking out the mirror where your light once reflected All of the love from up above We used to and plant foldies we're going to take a look at some of these urban jungle plants right here this one is for $13.98 dracaena janet craig compacta this is a plant i pretty much feature in all of my videos it is a plant that i'm literally trying to um, plant fluence you guys into getting it's a beautiful plant very just green plant but it's an easy to care for plant and i love all of the new urban jungle planters they've really um stepped up their game they may not be as modern and sleek as like live trends but as far as urban jungle They've got some nice cost-effective um, plants. This one's also for $13.98. This one is another Dracaena. This is called the Dracaena Dorado. Easy to care for plant, low light tolerant. And then we have another type of Sansevieria. Um, this one is a, I think a bird's nest Sansevieria. I'm not 100% sure, but do you see how they have that UJ um, etched into it as for urban jungle? What a nice touch to um, that planter. It makes it a little bit more organic, but still having like a sleek, um, feature about it i love the look of this particular sansevieria and you know with snake plants very easy to care for plants because they are low light um, tolerant as well as drought tolerant and we're going to take a look at this sans um not sansevieria i'm sorry syngonium white butterfly this one or actually it's not syngonium white butterfly i think this is a syngonium um berry illusion look at how gorgeous that is and i love that this syngonium has a little bit more round robust leaves and then if you look at the um the faint pink veining on it beautiful plant you know syngoniums are easy to care for if you do not um underwater them as in they really do need to be more on a consistent basis they're not as um, um drought tolerant as you would think and if you start to underwater them they will quickly decline in health so as much as i love syngoniums um it is one of those um, struggles that I have growing syngoniums is because I am not the person that will water my plants um, often. I used to be an overwaterer where I just literally watered my plants almost every day. And then what happened is a couple years back when I did that, I ended up getting a fungus gnat as infestation. So fungus gnats tend to be more prevalent when your soil is a little bit more moist or wet because they're able to lay their eggs and they're hatching, um, you know, their their babies. But if you keep, stay on more of a drier side, they don't you don't really have a lot of fungus gnats so I, I would just say a lot of that has to do with my fear of fungus gnats as well as just having a very busy lifestyle in terms of just a very demanding job as far as what's going on with my job super excited that I had a really good week this week I accomplished a lot and I'm just really looking forward to the weekend because I will be off um, I will be meeting with cultivation corner and for those that have been watching this video or my videos you already know that i'm really good friends with janae simone as well as steven from i lift plants we have decided since we are all based in dallas to create a plant podcast slash show and so we're going to be meeting at pita's planters i believe at around 11 ish this saturday to just kind of set some things up maybe do a collab but really just get our podcast going um our podcast which is going to be called the cultivation corner will be on all of our um channels so please make sure you 
are subscribed to Janae Simone as well as Steven of I Lift Plants. Um, we are going to be featuring at least a 30 minute episode podcast each time. And so I hope that you guys will tune in and support all of our channels and really support a plant podcast because I feel like there's not a lot of plant podcasts out there. We talked about that, although I feel like plant foldies as you watch my plant shopping videos some of you guys have mentioned that you just um, turn on my video and kind of listen to me talk it's kind of like a podcast so it's going to be similar in that sense where we're going to be talking about many topics about plants um, so hopefully you guys will support us hopefully you will share our podcast as well as our um, channel respective channels now as far as all of the plants i've shown you you can see that lowe's always has all of these costa farms plants and the only thing i would say about costa farms plants is i just hope that as i do these plant shopping videos that people are going to be a little bit more excited a little bit more um um willing to purchase these plants because the sad reality of it is a lot of these plants don't make it into homes and what happens is these plants end up going to plant heaven and then when you think about the plastic that was created for the planters the years it actually took to grow these plants to the number of plants needed to supply big box stores it's just a sad reality that a lot of these plants may not always make it into a plant home um, and that's the reason why if you are um you know debating on, on buying plants please buy plants like this please buy this beautiful syngonium white butterfly for instance or i think it, yeah it's a white butterfly for only 16 dollars 98 easy to care for plant um, i am going to be back into my propagation era where i'm literally going to be propagating and multiplying plants um, i do have my grow folds t-shirt there's so many things that i'm trying to do with the channel but i have so little time like i'm hoping to have a storefront for those that haven't gotten a grow folds t-shirt um, sent out um, i am working on getting that out um, i do apologize and you know please be patient with me but once i get that a little bit more consistent i'm really going to um, advertise that i think a lot of my um, um, advertising for my plant um, products I'm gonna have that ready to go my grandmother's actually the one who's gonna be propagating a lot of the plants I will also be selling um, propagations of plants so stay tuned for that now as far as what we're looking at though right now urban jungles again um, this season they've released some really beautiful planters like look at this so it's half terracotta half um, you know shiny glaze I don't mind that and actually having that um, juxtaposition I would say with the um, matte finish of the terracotta planter with the with the glaze it's a, a nice touch to it this one is for $13.98 this is a red marantha and you know whenever I go to these big box stores I'm always looking at the same plants but there are times where I may even think about rescuing a plant. Some plants are e either going to be, um, you know, clearanced out and marked out. And depending on the plant's health and the amount of time I want to invest into actually taking care of the plant and rehabbing it, um, it is a different story. But for me, growing plants like this, like I really am tempted to buy a Calathea lancifolia. So an update on the three Calatheas I bought from Home Depot for $18.98. Since the really big ones and 10-inch planters, they're all doing fine. I water them at least every three to four days, spray them with neem oil, and they're doing fine. And so, you know, sometimes you have to make the decision on how much time you want to invest in growing a plant. And so we're going to see if, you know, I'll be able to keep that alive. Like I've been looking at this Homolomena Shelby, for instance, velvety textured plant. So you already know if it's velvety texture, it's going to be a little bit more spider mite prone. It is a beautiful plant, but I just can't really stomach paying $22.98 for that plant just because it, I, I feel like I can find a better value for the plant. And, um, you know, that's the thing about going plant shopping. I'm always under the notion that I will only buy plants if the plant um, price is right. Like I would love to buy this Aglionema Golden Bay, for instance, but you know, for $22.98, I feel like I could buy a larger version of this from Home Depot. Granted, it is a beautiful plant. Now, if say Lowe's mark this for 50% off, I would buy this in a heartbeat because it just has a little bit of cosmetic damage. And that's the thing about Lowe's you can find some pretty cost effective plants if they're put on clearance but my only thing about it is when you buy a plant on clearance you have to really be prepared for number one the plant um having you know some what is it rehabilitation period number two the plant's probably going to have a plant pest number three the plant's probably going to need to be repotted because the soil um, is probably not the best at that point and number three just the time it will take to rehab the plant but 
you know, on the flip side, whenever we rescue plants, I feel like you're doing yourself a favor. That plant is going to have a chance to live, you know, because when you think about it, plants, they don't get a say on what, what plant home they're going to be at, where they're going to end up with. The only cho choice they have is how beautiful they are. And if they get lucky to be picked by somebody who loves plants, like I would love to be able to buy this Aglionema Silver Bay, for instance. Um, that is one of my aglionemas that uh, is on my wish list. Even though it is a common plant, it is a plant that will perform for you. And when I mean by perform for you, it will be one of those low maintenance plants. And it's a plant that's gonna bring you joy because then you're not gonna be so stressed. There are a couple of plants that I have in my plant collection that you know, for dear life, I try to just keep them alive and it has become more of a chore versus, you know, enjoyment when I'm having to do that for a specific plant. And that's the sad reality about growing certain plants is the fact that you have to, um, you know, put in a little bit more effort um, in trying to grow the plants. But for me, if I'm able to at least um, get them to thrive with that effort, it is satisfying. But and you know, you can see right here, plant foldies. Um, this one right here is a um, Alocasia Regal Shields. Loved the look of that plant, but that plant is so spider mite prone. Even in a self-watering planter, I don't think I'd be able to grow that plant um, long-term. But as you can see right here, plant foldies, um, I've shown you a lot of plants. Um, there's so many beautiful varieties of plants. The majority of these plants are actually Costa Farms. Um, so you can see here, we have a Ficus serrata in a self-watering planter, $15.98. And surprisingly, my Ficus Lyrata that I bought at Sprout is still doing very well. I got it for 99 cents. It was on like a liquidation, um, you know, what is a liquidation sale? And that's the thing, whenever you go to a big like grocery store, they tend to actually mark down their, um, their plants quite often. And so I lucked out on that. And then right over here, $15.98, we've got a Sansevieria trifasciata, um, beautiful snake plant, um, snake plants again, they are marketed as an easy to care for plant. They are marketed as a plant that can grow in low light tolerant areas, but I would still recommend growing that plant in an area where it still can get bright indirect light. Here's the sad reality about this beautiful Geonanthus plant or Geo plant. The dark foliage is gorgeous. This is for $20 or $19.84 trending tropical plant. However, this plant is a very, very finicky plant. You have to literally water this plant or not allow this plant to dry out. Um, otherwise, um, you know, to you know, one day you'll just walk in and see that it's already um, starting to crisp on the edges. Like even though I have my humidity levels in my um, plant room at like 75, 80% for a good eight hours a day in my plant room, for some reason it is still, you know, I still struggles if I don't water the plant. And so with the geo plant, it just makes me sad because I know after watching Costa Farm you know and how long it takes for them to produce a crop of these plants I it just makes me sad that a lot of these geo plants and I hate to put that like negative stigma around this particular plant but how many of these plants are actually going to make it into homes and how many of them are going to actually live long term and so for me sometimes the more finicky plants like that I just kind of um, steer away from it but you know at that point I've already committed to it and so it's a matter of just whether I am gonna um, try to keep that alive by just giving the plant its requirements and I spent a lot of time today on this plant shopping video just talking about plant requirements you know you get more out of the plant if you're able to fulfill its needs um, it's just like anything that you put your heart into if you put more effort into it it's most likely going to reward you but if you're able to find plants that you you don't have to put nearly as much effort for instance like this Sansevieria trifasciata you will actually gain um, more out of your time and you know the thing that I've um, realized is time is definitely precious time is very much so there's just never enough time and so for me plants have become a daily part of my routine you know making plant shopping videos have become a daily part of my routine showing and talking about plants have become a daily part of my routine but you know plant foldies um for me some of my plants have suffered because i haven't had enough time invested you know i get excited to look at plants like this one right here this is a um a, a green shields plant this plant i remember walking into my plant room and it was doing fine. Then all of a sudden, all of the leaves were um, pretty much drooping. I'm just thankful that it is a, more of a for forgiving plant. After I watered it, it did perk up within you know two to three hours, but 
I have to really find plants that are just more easy to care for. Same thing with the Xanthosoma right here. Found one at Callaway's Nursery, which is the local nursery for a really good price, but that's another one that I have to stay on top of the watering for. Um, for me, it's really just silly. I would say silly that I struggle with my plant care because of the watering um, you know, requirements. Sometimes I just don't have the hour or two to just water my plants all day. And so I always wonder with some of the YouTubers, the plant YouTubers that have like hundreds of plants, do you just like spend an entire day watering your plants? What does that look like? And so for me, you know, the watering has gotten better, but then it hasn't. Some plants I've had to really part ways with. Some plants I've had to like kind of downsize on what I want. Um, but for me, the secret to growing plants, uh, a healthy plant or just plant collection that's gonna bring you joy is to bring easy to care for plants. Or if you're gonna bring a plant that is gonna be more finicky, such as a calathea, just be prepared and understand that you're going to have to put a little bit more effort into the plant. Otherwise, it's just not gonna thrive for you. But as far as all of the plants we've seen at all of these big box stores, like this Dracaena Dorado for $12.98, it is one of those plants I feel like I would rather put in my collection and while it's a basic plant, while it's a plant that people would consider as an office plant, a doctor's office plant, some corporate building plant, it's a plant that's not going to take a lot of care. And that's the same thing that goes for like the pothos plant, like golden pothos. I remember going to a coffee shop called Wayward um, Coffee, beautiful trailing um, green pothos plants, but it was so beautiful and they were just in terracotta planters. And so for me, plant foldies, I, I do ask the question as I've shown you all of these beautiful plants, like this Diphenbachia, for instance, beautiful plant, very challenging to grow indoors. But what plants do you um, gravitate to? Do you prefer more of those rare, um, you know, aeroid plants that doesn't need a little bit more care? Or do you just prefer plants like the pothos plant, ZZ plants, Aglionema, Syngoniums, those basic but easy to care for plants? Please leave in the comments what your thoughts are on it. You know, I really am curious to see, um, you know, what what where everybody's at in terms of their, their plant collection. I tend to like the easy care for plants, but then I'm always suckered into that really nice variegated plant or some plant that I already know requires a lot of water and I know myself, I just don't water my plants. And I guess that's the theme of today's video is, you know, routines, the time invested, as well as whether it's worth like rescuing a plant. So like this plant right here, I would love to add this Palia, Moon Valley um, Palia into my plant collection. But knowing that this plant does require a little bit more water, um, it's a plant that I see often. So it's not like I wouldn't be able to just buy this if I really wanted to add it to my collection. But I'm, I, I don't think I'd add that to my collection because it is a plant that just requires a little bit more um, time and care. Same thing with Rex begonias. Like this is a beautiful one that, look at that metallic shine to it. There's that lavender pink tone to it, that silver metallic look. That one is for $5.98, but for $5.98, am I really um, willing to invest a little bit more time to try to keep that plant alive? Um, versus maybe this, you know, Dracaena Dorado that I've featured in um, this video quite often. This one's for $7.98. Um, would you actually grow that plant? So. For me, I've been able to grow at least one um, sing, uh, a begonia dorado and it's done well for me. But then, you know, sometimes you just have to really look at your, your time that you can invest in them. And, you know, with the with these plants, like, for instance, this croton um, sunny, is it this a sunny star croton? Beautiful plant as well for seven dollars and ninety eight cents. This plant, though, would only do better if you actually grow this outdoors. Otherwise, it's another plant that wouldn't do as well indoors because of the lighting conditions. So not only do you want to factor in just watering, but also the lighting condition. Now, as far as like crotons, though, if you can get them to grow on your patio, especially where you can get them full light, um, full sun, they will love it. And then Hydra Helix. This one also is a plant that I don't know. For, for me, I've talked about that this pretty much in all of my videos. And the reason why I think I love English Ivy, or I already know why, they remind me of maple um, leaves. They've got that shape like a maple tree, and they just look like a plant that you would think would be an easy to care for house plant. But that plant is so finicky indoors. It's just a spider mite magnet. And that's another thing as far as like your collection of plants. You know, you have to look at plants that are more susceptible to pests. 
Um, and so there are certain plants that I don't really want to add into my collection because it is really a um, threat to actually invite plant pests. I will say this year has been really good for me in terms of just not having a lot of plant pests um, enter my home because every time I water my plants, I end up spraying them with my DIY um, 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 Foldy Mist Spray, which is a neem oil spray that I use. I also use We The Wild um, neem oil spray called Protect awesome products by we the wild i hope to be able to get more of those if we the wild wants to sponsor me please hit me up i will show you the products that i use and i definitely use we the wild products especially their um grow concentrate awesome fertilizer for your plant um and it's one that i would recommend and you can see here though plant foldies dracaena masangiana so that cane dracaena look at how large this dracaena can get i've actually thought about getting that just so i can get something with a little bit more height into my plant collection um this weekend i am excited to move some things around in my living room to where i can continue to make my house plant tour but as you can see right here plant foldies um i've just shown you quite a bit of plants this is another plant that i wouldn't mind getting another hanging basket of um, philodendron heteracium brazil look at how the light hits it and just a beautiful plant this one is in a six inch planter for $16.98 now if i can find an urban jungle hanging basket of philodendron heteracium for like $12.99 at kroger i will buy that in a heartbeat beautiful plant i love the heart shaped leaves on it it is an easy to care for plant it's actually a moderate grower it's not as fast as a pothos or epipremnum arium but it is still a plant that um, is very easy to care for and one that i would recommend for anybody that is growing um, a beginning you know beginning to grow plants indoors um, epipremnum arium neon queen or actually not neon queen neon sorry pothos beautiful plant classic neon colored plant i love neon colors i have quite a bit of neon um, colored um, plants in my plant collection and i'm excited to share showcase that in my um, house plant tour so plant foldies again please be patient with me i'm so bad with some of my time management i think i try to um you know take on too many things and not have a lot of time but i will say i have been a little bit more kind to myself and allowed myself not to premiere a video and just give some time to myself so again plan foldies for those that have just been patient with me thank you and then for those that have made it this far into the video i do ask please make sure you have hit the like button because it does continue to push out these videos to more plant lovers like yourself i'm hoping by the end of the month that we can get to 11,000 subscribers i've seen quite a bit of new subscribers and i'm thankful for that I'm also thankful that I can see, you know, Neon Pothos being readily available again at big box stores. I'm actually thinking about buying another one because I feel like you can never have enough Neon Pothos. This one is a Polynesian Ivy. So this is another one of the plants I feel like would be easy to care for. It's one that I've been eyeing. It's one that I'm not in the rush to get because even though this is only for $20.24, this Cost of Farms Exotic Angel Hanging Basket in an 8-inch planter is one that I already know will get restocked. And that's the beauty of big box store plants or plants that you see at big box stores know that if you don't buy the plant it's not the end of the world you will be able to find that plant again um, it's just a matter of when it gets restocked so don't be in a rush if you don't have the time or more so the budget to take care of those plants, um, you know, you can hold off into it. And speaking of budget, for those that have left a super sticker, a super thanks, a monetary tip during my live premiere chats, or even during um, a team replay, thank you so much. When I say that that extra uh, monetary tip that's given to me via super sticker, you can see that there's like a little dollar sign. That really helps pay for some of my gas that I invest in, you know, traveling for these plant shopping videos, as well as my impulse buys for these plants like I, I I'm telling you maybe the couple of days that I haven't done plant shopping videos has actually helped me save money because I'm not having to buy plants and just having those impulse buys but as you can see right here plant foldies the one thing I did want to see um, are these aglionemas so this particular Lowe's has Aglionema Pink Siam. And, you know, a couple months back in the spring, they had a bunch of Aglionema Pink Siams. Look at that one right here. Now, this one is for $20.84. I already have an Aglionema Pink Siam, but that is another plant that I don't mind having multiples of because it's such a beautiful plant. Notice that it's got the white stems, but then it also has the beautiful pink um, edges on the leaves. Aglionema are my favorite plants in a sense that they just have so many different varieties of them and then i'm actually tempted to buy an aglionema red siam while this is a very basic plant 
and I know that it's a basic plant. It's one that you know you can find everywhere. It looks like Costa Farms has released quite a bit of um, Aglionema red siams into the market, so they've got some fresh, new, healthy ones. Whenever you're going to buy an Aglionema red siam or an Aglionema, you can see that they have a lot of plants in this particular one. Aglionemas tend to push out pups, especially or little babies, especially when it is um, happy and it's in a good growing condition. So whenever you're going to shop for Aglionema, specifically like the Aglionema red siam or pink siam, look for one like this that has so many different plants. Um, this one is for fifteen dollars and ninety eight cents, and honestly, that is not a bad price at all. You know, Aglionemas in general tend to be a little bit more um, expensive in general, but it's because that plant is harder to produce. Um, Aglionemas are very slow growers and for me um, you would think that I wouldn't be into aglionemas as much because I prefer plants that are a little bit more vigorous in its growth. I like plants that grow a little bit faster, but for some reason, aglionemas, um, the fact that they are low light tolerant and they come in so many different varieties, I think it's the stem color that really gets to me. I mean, look at that. Beautiful pink stems. Now, plant foldies, have you added yourself in aglionema red siam? Please leave in the comments. Let me know what you um, think. Let me know if I've been able to plant fluent you actually to buy in aglionema because um, as I look at these aglionemas I'm really tempted to purchase them but I already know I'm going to the Texas Aeroid show which is literally um, I think in like two weeks October 26 um, please make sure if you are a Houston plant foldy I would love to meet you um, I was actually selected as an official plant influencer for the Texas Aeroid show so I wanted to say thank you to the Texas Aeroid show for choosing me and um, actually sponsoring my trip there um, but but the plant um, tickets for Texas Aeroid Show, please purchase them. You can actually get the link from their um, Texas Aeroid Show um, Instagram. Message me if you are interested. Um, I definitely want to meet you guys there because there's going to be many different plants for those that love that plant content from PlantCon 2024 in Dallas. Know that I'm going to have hours and hours of film. Know that I'll be actually able to um, film the, the plant vendor setting up a day before. So if you want to see the inside scoop, you definitely want to make sure that number one, you are subscribed to my YouTube channel as well as um, with the notification bell on. So if you have been watching my videos, please take the time today to check to see if you have the notification bell on. It's going to definitely let you know whenever I upload some new content immediately. Now this right over here is another pink um, Siam Aglionema. Um, if you're able to find this particular Aglionema plant foldies, I would recommend buying it. It's a beautiful plant. If you were to see a pink um, Aglionema um, pink Siam, that one was a plant that was a little bit more expensive a couple of years back. And then obviously here is an eight inch hanging basket of Hydra. Helix, this um, Hedera Helix or English Ivy is one that um, is for $20.24. That is a plant that I wish I would be able to grow indoors as a trailing plant. I would just say if you want an English Ivy, grow it outdoors in a shaded patio and it will thrive for you. And then over here again, I keep looking at these uh, Aglionema pink siams. Like if I'm able to find one today, today that has um, been clearanced out or has been marked down, I think I'm going to buy me another Aglionema pink siam because it is one of those plants that I don't mind adding into my plant collection and having multiples of because it's so beautiful. And then you can see here, plant foldies, like look at this Sansevieria trifasciata. I don't know the specific plant ID, but look at how beautiful that is. Look at that foliage and then look at all of these Aglionema red siams. This one right here is another one that I like. Look at how much red this one is. This one looks to be a little bit overwatered though. That's the thing about aglionemas. You can kill an aglionema by overwatering them. They do not like to be watered often. Um, if you're gonna grow an aglionema, they like to be more so on the dry side. So only water an aglionema when the soil is completely dry. Try not to water it often and you should do well with it. Some aglionemas are a little bit more finicky. For instance, like that aglionema um, Lotus Delight. Um, for some reason, it struggles with me and I don't know if it's just one of the more like not as hardy aglionema, but as far as aglionema, if you're gonna grow them, it's better to put them in fast draining soil, kind of treat them more as like a succulent because when you touch their stems, they're very thick. And when you look at their roots, their roots are very much so like a thick spongy um, root system. 
But anyways, as you can see here, plant foldies, you can see that there are quite a bit of plants. Again, um, you can see that we have some philodendron pink princess. Now, there are different strains of philodendron pink princess. I think the more highly variegated ones are the philodendron pink princess galaxies. Um, this one doesn't have nearly as much variegation, but for me, even if a philodendron doesn't have as much pink, I do love the pink burgundy stems that it has. And then over here again, $15.98 is Aglionema red siam. I think this is such a pretty plant. It's a plant that I just feel like nobody's really talking about. And I'm just curious, is it because Aglionemas are just not as readily available? Like plant foldies, let me know in the comments. Because even when I was actually out at Plant Con, there wasn't as many Aglionema. So what, wait a minute, look at this one. This is an Aglionema that needs to be rescued, 911. Now, it's not in the 50% off thing, so I don't know. I, I guess I'm going to ask one of the managers if they would um, actually clearance this out because you can clearly see that the roots are out, that it's gone through some, some, um, you know, some stress. But if, as far as the plant itself, if you didn't see the roots exposed like that, it's a pretty healthy looking plant. Now, if I end up buying that aglionema because it is clearanced out or if they mark it down, what I'm actually going to do with that aglionema is actually, um, take the roots out, um, cut it back a little bit, make sure to disinfect it, make sure to spray it with neem oil, and then put it in a semi-hydroponic substrate such as pond and see if that works well for me. Now, Golden Pothos, $15.98, beautiful plant in a self-watering planter. I would say if you are watching my videos and you don't have a Pothos plant, that's another plant that I would say recommend to grow because they are easy to care for. This one is an Epipremnum Arium Lemon Meringue Pothos. This is actually a Pothos plant that is patented by um, Costa Farms. Um, it's a Costa Farms plant, and it's another one that if you don't give it enough light, you're not gonna get the best variegation or coloration for it, and then obviously, the Monstera Deliciosa is right here. Beautiful plant. It's another plant that, you know, a lot of people will are actually overlooked now because there's so many variegated Monsteras, specifically the Monstera Thai Constellation. But I love me a green, mature um, Monstera Deliciosa. And then over here is another plant that I love. Um, this is called a flame violet or called an especia. Look at that metallic shine on the leaves. Um, it looks similar to like an African violet almost. Look at that beautiful bloom. There's many different varieties. There was one called pink smoke that was super pink that I found at Steve's Leaves that I definitely want to be able to get, an, you know, to be able to acquire at some point. Um, again, plant foldies. If you haven't watched my Steve's Leaves nursery tour, definitely check that out. I would also recommend shopping online at stevesleaves.com really healthy looking plants, plants that you can find um, readily available and they ship all over the United States. But plant foldies, as you can see right here, I'm just finishing up some more of these plants. Um, definitely check this out and see what plants you might purchase at Lowe's. Um, again, plant foldies, I am asking, you know, in the comment section, if you can leave comments to let me know what plants you guys are um, seeing. But the, this one right here is a Peperomia Ginny, beautiful plant. It's another plant that I've had, but I ended up sending it to Plant Heaven because I just didn't water it for an entire month. And you know, that's the thing about being drought tolerant and just not watering the plant. You just have to be able to, to maintain that. But I keep going back to that Aglionema pink Siam that is exposed. I am not gonna be shy about asking whether they would mark this plant down because again, um, you know, it is a plant that I'm willing to rescue you and we'll see so i got lucky and i ended up actually getting it um on clearance for 50 percent off so sometimes it doesn't hurt to ask if you know they would mark down a um, you know a plant especially one that is really going through some stress the thing about aglionema is they can bounce back pretty quickly um especially if you cut the you know the the plant's dead roots really disinfect and spray the the roots and then um, we're gonna see if this plant will bounce back what i do plan on doing is splitting it into two so you can see i've done that where i literally sprayed down every single part of the plant with neem oil cleaned out the roots where there's no soil cleaned out the roots with um, neem oil alcohol rubbing alcohol and um, hydrogen peroxide to really disinfect it and now it is actually planted in pond this is one of two plants that i ended up getting and then i'm actually going to feature another aglionema this one's an aglionema two stone uh, moonshine this was another aglionema that got super leggy because 
because I uh, neglected it. So what I did is I actually repotted it in semi hydroponics and um, planted the leggy part deep into the plant to see if it will actually recover. And then this is a second Aglionema pink Siam rescue. This is a smaller one. So I put one in a six inch planter and then another one in a four and a half, five inch um, uh, self-watering planter with um, pond. We're gonna see if this will actually root and actually just um, thrive again. So we're gonna see what that looks like. And I actually had a plant propagation of Syngonium tricolor red spots. Um, it was a water propagation. They had quite a bit of roots already. So I went ahead and put it in pond as well. I am loving pond just because it's such an easy substrate to grow. And then so plant foldies, you can see that I was able to rescue an Aglionema pink Siam. You can see we've got four plants. Um, I was able to get two plants out of that. So I ended up I'm getting it for 50% off. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video today. I would really appreciate it as well as subscribing to my YouTube channel at Growfold. You can see that all of these plants are now in semi hydroponics. This is Richie at Growfold. I hope you've enjoyed today's installment. I will have a brand new video tomorrow. See you then. Bye.